Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. This week I'm joining the Punched Out Thursday to Die For collaboration. We share ideas every Thursday on what to do with your punches and your dies. I'm going to put links to Ronnie's, Kathy's, Krista's, Rebecca's and Sonia's channels below. So be sure to check out what they're up to this week. And for me this week, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than usual. I usually focus on talking about embellishing a page using tools, but today I'm going to be talking more about creating interesting layers on the layout using your tools. And here's what I'll be using. I have material from the Maggie Holmes Marigold collection. These are basically leftovers from a page I created on YouTube earlier this week. And as for tools, I have a bunch of tools here. They will all be listed in the description box below. I'm going to talk about them throughout the process. And I'm going to be sharing some hacks on how to create some of the layering looks I'll be creating, even if you don't have these tools. I usually do that, but I find today's hacks even a little bit more interesting. Here's what's on my desk. I have a frame style foundation with two sheets of paper and I did got one of them. There's a tutorial on my channel where I do that. That will be linked up below. I matted those two photos in advance. I have a bunch of paper on my desk. Like I said, leftovers from a page I created earlier in the week. I also have a cut apart sheet, a handful of scraps and a basket full of tools. Now I do have a jumping off point and it's a sketch from page maps from Becky Fleck and I found this on the Facebook page a cherry on top so I will link that up below. I'll also link up below the page map site as well because there's tons of like free inspiration there and this one I found it had a lot of really interesting layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my boring layer, the base layer, which is basically going to be kind of a horizontal border made up of two pieces of paper. And then I'm going to have a very narrow strip at the top of the page. This is all according to the sketch. And I am putting measurements for all of this on the screen. But once I get that all cut, then what I'll do is start creating the interesting layers that are on the sketch. And that's when I will be breaking out my tools. So I'm just going to place those pieces on the page right now and I'm getting out my big shot. Now the first layer I want to create is that file folder that you see under the photo on the right. I have a file folder die from Stampin' Up. I absolutely love it. It's really, really old and I use it all the time. And that's what you see me doing there. I'm starting with a piece of paper that's five and three quarter inches wide. I'm placing that die across the top. You're going to see out pops a file folder and then I'm going to trim that down to four and three quarter inches and that's where I'll place the photo. But in a moment, I'm going to show you two different ways you can create a file folder if you do not have that old file folder die because it really is quite easy. So there you have it. I'm really happy with that. Love that look. But now I'm going to show you how else you can create a file folder. So what I like to do is you can use a label punch. If you have any label punch, I have tons of them, but there's one right there. All I did was punch out a label in the same paper and I tucked it behind and that makes a great file folder. Another thing you can use is a corner rounder. I just have a kind of a block of paper. I rounded two corners, tucked it behind the paper, and again, that has the look of a file folder. I find when you do that, if the strip is too narrow that you're using the file tab part, for me anyway, my file, my uh, corner rounder doesn't work well. So I like to have almost like a square of paper. But anyway, great way to make a file tab. Now what I'm going to do is start creating the next layer that's on the sketch, and that is a notebook. So I happen to have a notebook border punch. This is from the Creative Memories Border Maker system. I absolutely love it. So all I'm doing is taking a project lifestyle card that has grid paper on it from Stampin' Up, punching myself out a notebook border. I'm gonna trim off that uh, printed paper there. I don't want that. And that I end up trimming to three inches by four inches. 
But in a moment, I'm going to show you how you can create a notebook border with a simple hole punch and a pair of scissors. And it's a great little trick. And you're going to see it looks almost identical. And it's really, really easy. So what I will be doing, actually, I'm just showing you the sketch there, how I'm following the sketch. I took a lined piece of paper. And what I did was I took a hole punch and then I simply punched holes. They're not perfect, believe me, I'm eyeballing it. And I punched a row of holes down. Then what I did was with a pair of scissors for each one of those holes, I cut two slits. So essentially I'm cutting a chunk out of the top of paper above each one of those holes. And it looks almost exactly to what I punched out with my border maker system. And if it's not perfect, no big deal. You can ruffle it up like it's been ripped out of a notebook and you won't even tell. But it really is a great hack to creating that notebook look. Now what I'm going to do is punch out some tags. On the sketch, on the photo, or underneath the photo on the left, there's a tag that's sticking out from underneath. So I'm using that cut apart sheet from the Marigold collection, which I cut apart off camera, and I'm just cutting a few of them down. So my tag punch makes tags two inches wide and simply angles the corners. Obviously, if you don't have a tag punch, that is super easy to replicate. All you do is take a strip of paper and trim the corners and punch a hole in the middle. That's it. I also took one of those cut apart sheets and just punched myself out a label. Again, creating interesting layers here. So you can see on the left, well, I'm a little bit off camera there, but I've got two tags and a label. And I have a label at the bottom there. That stays for a while, but doesn't end up staying forever. You'll see that in the still shots at the very end. And what you see me doing right now is cutting out yet another interesting layer that was on the sketch. That was a border, an old border punch from Stampin' Up, a scalloped border punch. And on the sketch, there's like a scalloped border underneath that narrow strip of paper at the top of the page towards the right. And also underneath that photo cluster at the bottom left. So that's where I put those scalloped pieces of punched out paper. So you can kind of see, I'm showing you the sketch. I've got the notebook border, the file folder, I've got the tags, I've got the scalloped border, and all of that is on that really fun sketch. So I'm finding the page looking really fun and quite interesting, and I haven't even embellished. This is all simply layers, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, how the need for embellishing really is diminished because of all of these interesting layers that I'm using my tools to create. So you can see I've sped up the film and I'm just adhering all of this down because I do want to add a few more finishing touches and of course a title, but I have way too many loose pieces on my desk so I'm just had to stop everything and adhere it. So there you see it. I'm really actually quite happy with this sketch. What a fun sketch it is. Anyway, I'm just showing you the sketch, how I've kind of followed it, especially all those layering pieces using my tools. Now off camera, I cut out my title in advance. It says spring. You don't see it very well there, but you do see it better in person and in the stills at the end of this video. And each one of those letters in the word spring is layered up with two layers of hidden cardstock, just to raise it up a bit, kind of creating a thicker look. And I'm going to put the year in those foam figures, 2021, and it's going to go underneath the word spring. So I'm starting to adhere my title. I'm not going to make you watch me adhere all of it, but basically it's going to be spring 2021. And once I get that down, then I'm going to come in with just a few finishing touches. But like I said, there's a lot of interesting layers here, and I actually find the need for embellishing really decreases because of all of these interesting layers. So now, as you can see, all around me, I have a few more punches. I have a stamp set. And what I'm going to do is take this stamp set, an old one from close to my heart called Today's Date, because this is about spring and whatever. So I'm going to stamp out the month, which is April. And that month in the circle there kind of reminds me of that paper. It's like a typewriter paper, that black one that's in the border underneath my photos. So I'm taking a one and three eighth 
inch circle punch and punching that out and that's going to kind of go up in that cluster by the tags and the journaling box and this is another punch an old punch from stampin up a chevron border punch i haven't used it in a long time but i always love this punch for adding just a finishing touch on a page without adding too much visual weight so what I end up doing is putting a few of them down there at the bottom, kind of pointing in towards the page. And at this point, I have two up by the title there, but that you'll see in the stills ends up getting moved down more in that cluster by the tags. Now, at this point, I'm creating myself some reinforcers for those tags. So I have a whole punch and a half inch circle punch, and that creates a little ring. So I'm adhering that around my tags. And I'm going to also add some twine. Now this twine is from Stampin' Up. It's black and white. It's really quite nice. So I'm going to add those to those tags. And honestly, after that, all I'm going to do is adhere these small pieces to the page. The word April, you'll see, ends up getting popped up on foam adhesive. For the um, twine, I ended up using glue dots to adhere them to the tags. I find the glue dots works really, really well with kind of fibers. And I end up adhering those chevrons where you see them right now. But like I said, in the still shots at the very end, you're going to notice the ones up top that are pointing towards the word spring end up getting moved down a bit. I just found them a little bit distracting, to be perfectly honest, up there by the title. There you have it. They've been moved down a bit. And of course, I added my journaling. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I would be absolutely thrilled if you did. Don't forget to check out the other ladies. Their links are in the description box below. And like I said, you can really create an interesting layout with interesting layers using your tools. And I personally find that because of these interesting layers, the need for heavy embellishing really isn't necessary at all. Or for me anyway, I would have found it too much adding more embellishing to this layout. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.